Good morning. Oh, it's really good to see you all on this beautiful day. Amen? We made it to Sunday. Are you ready for Monday? Got homework? You know, it's like, do I? I don't know. Well, today, in our Holy Darkness theme, we're going to hear especially a story of God's darkness and wrestling with God in darkness. As we hear Jacob, Jacob wrestles with God in darkness and prevails and is blessed with a new name, Israel, which is a very interesting name because it means one who has striven with God and yet prevails. So we'll hear that story and how it could tie into us today as well. In your worship bulletin on page three, we begin with the invitation to holy darkness and Carrie and, and I will come forward to the mic. There's a little assisting minister part. Carrie may not have known that, which is just fine. This is how easy assisting minister, being an assisting minister is, right? Thank you. I know. We all help each other out. We get by with a little help from our assisting ministers. I <laughs> like that. But I invite you all to stand as you're able. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of God, the Lord is near. Not in flashes of brilliant light but in holy darkness. Creation was born from darkness. Jacob wrestled with God at night and received a blessing. God freed the Hebrew people from Pharaoh at night. Jesus prayed to his heavenly father throughout the night. People of God, the Lord is near. Lord, let your holy darkness fall upon us now and we will be saved. Amen. You may be seated. What we're about to hear in the gospel today, Jesus tells Peter and the disciples that he would soon die. And Peter rebukes Jesus. He can't imagine how the Son of God could ever die. The Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 8. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus began to tell the disciples that he must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later, he would rise from the dead. And as he talked about this openly with the disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. And Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples and then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view and not from God's. Then calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life, for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And you can already see on our pyramids as clouds gather and two fists wrestle, wrestle together. I was thinking of the Rock'em Sock'em guys, remember? Well, it was pretty small. So we think about the wrestling that happens with us between God and each other. And we hear an ancient story of one named Jacob who also wrestled physically and literally with God. The same night, Jacob got up and he took his wives, his two maids, his 11 children, all of his belongings and crossed the ford of the Jabbok River, River. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything. He was wealthy and had a lot of um, cattle and things. So this, this, this took a while. Everything that he had went across the river. Now Jacob 
was left alone at night. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket so that Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day's breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. He said this to him. He replied, what is your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. Then this man said, well, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and, and humans, you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, well, please tell me your name. But he said, why, why is it that you ask my name? And there he was blessed, Jacob, Israel. So Israel called the place Peniel, which means, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life was preserved. The word of the Lord, word of God, word of life. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Would you agree that we are not very good in darkness? Just, just ask your pinky toe. <laughs> that cowers in fear during the dark. Fear of door jams and bedposts and coffee table legs. Ooh, I mean, how many people's little toes, pinky toes, have been broken or severely bruised? Arms outstretched, fingers feeling, rummaging through the air for anything familiar. Reticent legs kind of shuffling. We're just not very good in darkness. So ask Jacob the story that we just heard. The second-born twin who through trickery cheated and stole his older brother by a, probably a few minutes, who stole his brother Esau's inheritance. Maybe some of you remember that story. And what an inheritance it was. The inheritance was God's covenant that was made with Jacob or Israel's grandfather Abraham, which we'll hear about in a few weeks to look up into the sky at night, and as many stars as you see, you will have descendants and blessings galore. What a covenant to inherit. But the dagger of guilt plunged deep into Jacob's conscience, as guilt will do. Forever on the run he was in the wilderness of sin. Esau's shadow, I imagine, that night as he was left alone with all of his family and possessions across the Jabbok River. Esau's shadow stalked him in the darkness. Getting closer and closer, Jacob weaved and bobbed, I'm sure, protecting his face until a searing blow tore through his thigh, his thigh, his hip socket and falling hard on the desert ground, limping forever, a constant reminder that we are not that good in the dark. <laughs> but unrelenting, Jacob wrestled with this man, Esau, in the dark, until finally, face to face, holding on to each other, it was not Esau, but a man, whose eyes contained the galaxies of all creation, whose grasp was as familiar as that covenant, that promise God made to his grandfather Abraham, ensnarled in a physical battle and a battle of the will, Jacob and God wrestled throughout the darkness of night. One not letting go of the other until God attempted to return to the shadows of the morning sun. Exhausted though, Jacob, can you just see this? Jacob just held on and yelled, bless me, Lord, because I have prevailed. 
and letting go. Here's where some holy imagination takes place, a curiosity and wonder, which I love. And we learned this from our Jewish brothers and sisters to read in between the scriptures, this scripture, their scripture as well, letting go of each other. I imagine God exhausted sitting back with the Holy Trinity now in audience, laughing, and God replying, who was it, Jacob, that won this wrestling match? Who's been wrestling with your brother since you were a twin in your mother's womb? Remember, it was said that he, he, as he left the womb, as Esau left the room, Jacob reached and clenched onto the heel, wanting to be the first, but he was the second. And I'm sure parents with twins know how that goes back and forth. My grandma was a twin. Oh. You who've been wrestling, Jacob, with paranoia and fear, you who've been wrestling with the guilt of conning your blind elderly mother, father, stealing your brother's inheritance, Jacob, who won? Who was it that won this wrestling match, dear Jacob? Who wouldn't let go? Who forgives the multitude of sins? Whose steadfast love held your trembling hand since birth? Who delivered you into the break of this new day? Who, Jacob, the God of Israel, your new name, your new blessing, as we look at the names of the children around this font and our names, although not on the font, in the holy waters. We are not very good in darkness, but thanks be to God that God is. We have often feared darkness, seeking light, but darkness is the place of the holy, sacred presence of God. God is in darkness, wrestling with us in our struggles to understand so many things. And isn't it just like a typical human that Jacob believed that he was the one who would not let go as though he was stronger than God? But they held on and prevailed together. And not only was Jacob blessed with a new name, he was blessed by God's grace to have prevailed with God. That's what these waters are about. That is what baptism is about. Us rising, dying and rising with Christ, holding on through the cross. And like Jacob, ex exhausted from wrestling in the darkness of night, fraught with worries and fears, guilt and that inventory of sin, God calls our name today until, until we no longer tremble, until we are reminded of this promise that I love you by heart, I know you by name. And as Jonathan and as we responded with the psalm, as the author reminds us, the Lord does not despise those who are poor in spirit, the weak, those who aren't good at dark, in the dark, and nor does God hide us. But the Lord delivers us. From you, Lord, comes our praise. And darkness is the place of holy, sacred blessing. Amen.